As dermatologists, we would never discourage anyone from coming in for a skin cancer screening. However, there are populations at increased risk, particularly those individuals with fair skin types and a lot of sun sensitivity. Individuals who are sensitive to the sun tend to get more skin cancers, including the non-melanoma skin cancer types, basal cell and squamous cell skin cancer, as well as melanoma, which is the deadliest form of skin cancer. We also look for other risk factors, such as strong family history of skin cancer, both the melanoma types and non-melanoma types, lots of moles on the skin, including what we call clinical atypical moles or dysplastic moles. Any individual with a changing or suspicious skin lesion should certainly have it checked out. Moles can occur anywhere on the body. They're also called melanocytic nevi. When you're looking for melanoma, you're looking for an atypical mole, although in reality, most melanomas don't arise from a pre-existing mole, but come out as a melanoma on their own. However, it's important to recognize clinical warning signs for melanoma, and these include the ABCDE criteria, which were devised by the American Academy of Dermatology over 20 years ago. A is for asymmetry, where one half of the lesion doesn't match the other. B is border irregularity. C is color change within a lesion where variable shades of color may be evident, brown, black, white, blue, or even kind of a pink or red color. D is for a diameter. Any growing mole, particularly that larger than a pencil eraser, should be evaluated to make sure it's not undergoing malignant change. Very importantly, E has been added for evolving, where the lesion is changing differently or looks different from the rest of the person's lesions on the skin. This can be very helpful for certain subtypes that don't fulfill the other ABCD criteria, particularly a type of melanoma called nodular melanoma, which tends to grow up on the skin. It elevates, ulcerates, and bleeds more commonly than other melanoma subtypes. Squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma are actually the most common skin cancers we see worldwide. In fact, in the U.S., they've now been estimated to occur in over 3.5 million individuals per year. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common, probably about 3 million cases itself, and tends to be a less harmful skin cancer. It doesn't invade the skin as deeply as other skin cancers, although it can be very locally destructive and disfiguring. Squamous cell skin cancer can metastasize, meaning spread to other parts of the body, and about 2,000 deaths in the U.S. per year are due to squamous cell skin cancer that has spread to other parts of the body. Both forms of skin cancer are important to recognize earlier for optimal treatment and cosmetic results with surgery or other modalities. Examination of the back is very important for melanoma, particularly in middle-aged and older men, in whom we see the highest rates of melanoma incidence, that's new cases, as well as the highest rates of mortality, that's deaths from disease. It's estimated that an individual receives about 25 to 80% of his or her lifetime sun exposure in childhood or adolescence. We do recommend lifelong sun protection though, as some skin cancers tend to be related to chronic or cumulative sun damage over time. Excessive sun exposure in childhood and adolescence can increase the number of moles that one develops as an adult, and that's an independent risk factor for melanoma. Sunburns in childhood can also increase the risk of developing melanoma as one ages. It's very important to note that there is no safe tan, whether this is through natural sunlight or artificial light via sun, sunbeds or tanning salons. This form of artificial light uh, is considered a carcinogen by the Food and Drug Administration, and the amount of ultraviolet radiation that an individual receives in a tanning bed is 15 times stronger than that emit emitted by natural light. So we do not consider that a safe tanning mechanism. It is estimated that if fair-skinned individuals practice diligent sun protection from childhood on, we could prevent up to 75% of skin cancers over a lifetime. So that's a very strong reason to not get uh, too much tans or burns as a child or adolescent.